Hello everyone, this is Moshe the Electric Israeli and um, I'm in Israel right now, of course, my video from Israel and my annual visit, annual vacation um, to the family and I'm on my way to my hometown of Tzfat where I was born and raised, of course, and um, Today's video, obviously, appropriately, because I'm, because I'm in Israel, is going to be about the unfortunate failure of the Israeli uh, electric car adventure. Uh, if you remember, I, if you don't, I totally understand, maybe more than 10 years ago, there, was a, there is an entrepreneur, a very interesting, innovative guy, by the name of uh, Shai Agassi. And Shai Agassi, uh, Shai Agassi is, um, had a great idea of introducing electric cars in Israel. The concept was uh, you buy the car, I believe, and then you go to, to a, a battery exchange centers where you swap your battery. Uh, it was a Renault, uh, and then, you know, the, I'm not sure, remember exactly all the details, but here's what I totally know and totally remember, is that the car and the fuel, which is the uh, battery, was for charge. What does that mean for charge? Uh, and let's let's compare it to the Tesla model, where you get free um, free uh, charging, uh, free supercharging. Here, every time you had to charge or every time you had to swap your battery, there was a fee. Now, because Israel is a small, tiny country and single homes, it's not uh, something that we have here uh, abundantly. Uh, then, in pu public stations, basic public charging stations don't even exist. So basically, you were buying the car and paying for the swap, every, for paying for the swap of the battery uh, every time. I remember when Bill Clinton was in Israel. He was the president at that time. He was in Israel, or actually, he was not the president, but he came and he spoke to Shai guys. He says to him, "Listen, one thing has to be free: the the, the swap or the car." So uh, it became, every time you had to go, you couldn't charge it anywhere and because it's just, just not something that you can do physically because uh, uh, everybody lives in apartments and there are no public charging stations and uh, it's just not possible to charge the car. You had to go every time you ran out, two minutes, you swap your battery and you're on your way. And there were many of them, uh, you know, like uh, swap centers but you had to pay so much money. The car was very expensive and to, to exchange the battery every time was also so expensive. So um, uh, it didn't last, it didn't last. It was very few, couple years and this, this guy tried to take it over and that guy tried to take it over and it just, it just failed. It just failed, not failed, failed miserably. Now people who own it still have it somehow. They, you know, you know, they, sold it and then uh, and it was you know returned it was also in Denmark the same idea but the, the the fact that there are no public charging station and, and and charging at your home was was just virtually impossible and the whole idea of of swapping uh, your battery just was expensive and not so practical uh, brought it to a point that in countries like this where most people live in, live in cities and most people uh, need public uh, free or public very inexpensive charging charging station uh, made it made it clear that um, electric cars electric cars for them to be a part of uh, the mainstream have to be with some kind of a government uh, inter not intervention, government partnership and business partnership to create a public fast charging station, not 
necessarily batteries, battery swaps, because battery swaps, you know, requires a lot of people, workers, and makes everything so make everything so expensive. So, um, so that even Tesla. Remember when Tesla had that very very fancy uh, whatever it is, a swapping event that doesn't doesn't last. I mean, the whole idea is that you go, you fast charge for 20 minutes, and you on your own. Uh, and you don't need anybody to intervene. You don't have to make appointments. You don't have to keep batteries in stock and battery packs in stock and all that. So uh, to me, that that miserable failure, that real miserable failure, was a testimonial for uh, for sorry for what uh, the future and what what is possible for uh, ele- electric cars in countries that where most people do not have a single home, like where I live in America, uh, and, and uh, can charge uh, their car most of the time at home, which what is the electric car idea is. And if you wanna bring it to countries like this, public charging stations, fast charging stations, must be, must be part of uh, what is it that you do. All right, so that's that experience and how it, uh, it became to be um, uh, a reality, unfortunately, and how it can be, uh, it can be uh, uh, solved in the future. Now, the government of Israel, and that's politics, and I'm not going to get into it, uh, or oh, natural gas, Israel discovered tremendous amount of natural gas in the Mediterranean. So for Israel to become now an electric car, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's just unfortunate because there's abundance of sun here all the time. Another topic for another time, obviously. All right, from Israel. The Electric Israeli is asking you to subscribe to my channel. Help me change the world one electric car at a time. And don't forget to become my patron. And I'll see you next time.